Hey y'all, I'm Crystal and welcome back to my Texas garden. It's time to start getting those fall seedlings into the ground. Now, if you're new around here, welcome. And if you're all about gardening naturally, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to smash the bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. All right, y'all, we are well past time to get these poor little squash plants into the ground. So we're actually gonna be working in this area today. Now, earlier this spring, I did have some squash plants in here. After I pulled the squash plants out, I did put some more hay down, but as you can see, there is no hay left on the ground. That's because it completely decomposed already. So first things first, I need to clean this area up, get all of the grasses cut, and then we're going to start putting our seedlings into the ground. Well, y'all, it's the next day, and let me tell you what happened yesterday. So yesterday I was out here working, and it was probably somewhere around 95 degrees with the feels like temperature of 2010. Um, anyway, so I was out here working, and I was not paying attention to the camera. The camera actually got overheated and shut down. And as you can see, it's back up and running today. After I discovered it was shut down, I uh, took it in and let it cool off. Um, but I did ask the kids to come out and move this hay for me, and we didn't get that on film. But you guys got the idea that I mowed really, really low. As my dad used to say, you're scalping the lawn. So I scalped the lawn, and then we put the hay on top. So today, all I have to do is go in and plant my seedlings. And therein lies the problem with my seedlings. I'm not happy with them. Now, I'm not too sure what happened with these seedlings. Um, as you can see, the bean seedling is perfectly fine, but the rest of these got really, really leggy. They're very light in color, like they, they're lacking some nitrogen really, really bad. After thinking about it and looking at these seedlings overnight, I think the best thing to do is just to scrap them. I think what's gonna happen is if I plant these, I'm gonna spend more time trying to get these things to grow and grow properly. Um, I'll end up spending more time getting them to survive rather than them thriving. And getting them just to survive is not going to give me a bountiful crop. So, let's start over. So since I still have plenty of time, I'm gonna go ahead and direct sow some seeds. So in a very short amount of time and with minimal work, I have actually planted some yellow squash. I have planted some zinnia seedlings, and I've also planted some basil seedlings. Plus, I got rid of the weeds. Okay, so earlier this spring, I set this area up to grow squash. So I have little hills that are spaced out at about 36 inches apart. So I'm planting two different types of squash. I'm planting a zucchini type, and I am planting a straight neck yellow squash. Now both of these squashes are listed as a bush type squash, but earlier this spring, it sort of vined out on me just a little bit. So I wanted to give them a little bit more space from my normal 36 inches. So what I decided to do, in between the squash plants, I decided to put some zinnias because color and I also decided to put in some Thai holy basil. Now because I am putting my hay down so thick today, I decided that I did not want to plant my little seedlings into the ground. So what I'm basically doing is piling the hay around my little seedling and using the hay kind of as a planter. And then I'm adding more 
really good garden soil into the hay planter, if you will, to surround my little seedling. That way my little seedling's up off the ground and I don't have to worry about the hay covering it up too bad. Now the squash, I have put it into the ground. So what I did was I took my little garden weasel and I just disrupted the soil. From there, I just put my seeds on top of the soil and then I put about an inch of really good garden soil on top of my seeds. Now squash naturally is a heavy feeder and I'm going in really quickly with another round of squash plants in the same area, which is why I went ahead and added a little bit more garden soil. Now the garden soil has chicken manure. It also has mushroom compost. So as the seedlings emerge, that's gonna help feed the little plants until the hay begins to break down and start feeding the plants. And to be quite honest, once my seedlings emerge and they have about their third set of true leaves, I will most likely go in and give them a little bit of plant fertilizer just for that added boost. Now, as you see, as I'm putting the hay down, I'm actually stepping on it and pressing it down. Now, remember, we wanna maintain our hay at eight inches thick pressed down which is why I'm pressing the hay down now and really trying to compact it down. Now, I don't have it quite to eight inches thick right now because of the seedlings and because I'm putting seeds in, which means in a couple of weeks, I'll have to come back in and add more hay. So remember, to keep the weeds out, we have to keep it maintained at eight inches or more. And also remember, hay breaks down a lot faster than wood chips. Now that I've got a good majority of it done, I'm gonna go ahead and water the seeds and the seedlings and I'm gonna set the hay. And y'all, I wanted to add one more thing before the sun completely goes down on us today. If you're a new gardener, and you have killed plants, you have killed seedlings, you have not had seeds germinate, just know that every good gardener has a long history of killing plants, myself included, as you saw today. So if you kill a plant, replace it. Try it again. Don't give up. For more great gardening videos just like this one, go ahead and click right here and I'll meet y'all over there.